trusting my soul And his blood has covered my sins I believe I believe It's 
bless you today. It's good to see you in our Father's house on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. And if I could have my way, <laughs> you'd, never you'd never drive to church in the rain. <laughs> you'd never have to wear more than just a little jacket. But since I'm probably not going to have my way, Just dress right, I guess. Praise the Lord. Hope you've had a great week this week. and I'm sure that you have. <clears throat> when we are in Christ and He is in us, it's a wonderful time to be alive. Even in some of our troublesome times, it's still a great time in history. Someone asked me that the other day. They made reference to that. And they said, you realize what a wonderful time and hour and dispensation that this is to be alive in. Uh, we're going to see some exciting things between now Amen. and the trumpet of God and the coming of Christ, the rapture of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you excited about that? Yes. Hallelujah. Me too. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Uh, I would like to uh, ask you if you remember, I've lost another dear friend, comrade in the ministry, uh, the day before yesterday. and. New Jersey, 56-year-old uh, uh, Bishop Tim Bradham went to be with the Lord, and I've known Tim for a number of years, and uh, tremendous minister, uh, very, very sharp pastor, but his health failed with diabetes, and for whatever reason, uh, it, it just <clears throat> finally uh, took him home to be with the Lord this Saturday, and, and I was saddened to hear that. It's been two pastor friends that's uh, quite a bit my junior, and they went to be with the Lord in the last year, year and a half. But I'd like for you to remember Tim Bradham's family. His wife has uh, been uh, ministering and trying to take care of the pastoral role -ship, leadership there in that local church. For sure, it's been very difficult for her. They have two fine daughters. But if you remember this uh, family, Tim Bradham family, and uh, I know that the family would appreciate it. And I received a couple calls yesterday and talked to one of the elders there that I pastored for 10 years. Just a great man. I've not really seen any, any better and any finer to stand by uh, a pastor and leaders as this man of God is. And so he's doing a lot of ministering to this family. And that you'll just uh, pray that the Lord will bless them. Take someone's hand and just tell them how adorable they look today. Praise the Lord. A teenager was telling his pastor about their church's volunteer youth leader who was refusing to allow the boy to join in any future camping trips. Why not, the pastor asked. What happened? I think he's mad because I lost our compass when we waded through a creek, the boy replied. He's that mad, the pastor asked, because a little compass got lost? Well, it wasn't just the compass. The teen responded, we all got lost. I'll do better next week. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Do want to reiterate your business. You have this wonderful freedom. How many appreciate that we still live in a great country Amen. that offers us freedom of expression, freedom of religion, and freedom to serve our Lord. But I want to also encourage you. It's odd that uh, Brother Leonard... Uh, Took a couple of moments and encouraged us to do this today. And Brother Gowen didn't hear him say that this morning. And he come in and encouraged us. And I want to encourage you. And uh, Leonard, uh, I don't know if you are aware of this or not. I'll just say this quickly. But Franklin Graham has, uh, around the United States of America, I believe he's been to every state capital uh, in the last year, year and a half, promoting prayer for this very day coming Tuesday. And so when God's people do pray and seek the Lord, I do believe that God intervenes. And I'm so proud of, of the body of Christ. To be honest with you, there was a while that I thought, dear God, are your people ever going to stand up and be counted? Are we ever going to express our freedoms just like everyone else? 
expresses theirs. And I'm so grateful, and I applaud you today. If you're going to go and vote, and if you don't go and vote, you're, I'm not going to treat you any different than I do now. But I want to encourage you to vote because that is your right. And so the Lord bless you as you do that. I'm going to preach on a subject this morning that's almost oblivious. You seldom ever hear a, a sermon on it. I don't know when I've heard a sermon on the subject this morning, but the Lord has really impressed this in my heart this week, and I want to, uh, I want to pass this on to you, and I trust and I hope that when we leave here today that this, this Word of God will leave an indelible impact on your life and that it will be long remembered and never forgotten. If you turn your Bibles to Job chapter 27, I want to read verses 3 through verses 6. Job chapter 27, verse 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then I want to skip right down to Job chapter 31, verse 6. The scripture said, and I want you to listen very close. I'm going to read this from the New Living Translation. The, the, this translation is so self-explanatory and, it, and it, just, it just brings it out, I think, in such a wonderful way. Job said, as long as I live, if you can put your name in there, do that. As long as I live while I have breath from God, my lips will speak no evil, my tongue will speak no lies, I will never concede that you're right, I will defend my integrity until I die. I will defend my integrity until I die. I will maintain my innocence without wavering. My conscience is clear for as long as I live. Job 31 verse 6. Let God weigh me on the scales of justice. For he knows my integrity. Father in the name of Jesus. I thank you this morning Holy Spirit for this wonderful subject. For this beautiful subject. And I pray Holy Spirit as I humble myself in your presence and in the presence of these precious people here today that you have charged me to feed the flock. <clears throat> and may I declare, thus saith the word of the living God this morning, would you use my vocal cords? Would you allow me the privilege to speak for you today? And I, and I do that very conscientiously, Lord, and, I, and very sensitively to you and to the Holy Spirit. I want to bless your people today. I want to bless anyone and everyone, God, that may hear this Word of God today. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll go before me just now. I submit to your anointing. I surrender everything about my person, every fiber of my being. I yield it to you, Lord. I give it to you. And as always, Lord, before I preach the gospel, my prayer is that if there is one under my voice today that does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and as Savior, then, then may this be their moment and time in life that they receive you into their hearts. Go before me now, Father. I submit it all to you, and I'll give you praise and honor and glory that you are so worthy of. And everybody said, <clears throat> Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let God weigh me on the scales of justice, for He knows my integrity. I want to preach this morning on the subject I think almost the lost subject of integrity. I want to define the word integrity to you this morning. You probably already know the definition, but I want to give you three definitions of the word integrity, its meaning. Number one, integrity means firm adherence to a code of moral morals or values. It means incorrupt. Stability. Number two, integrity is an unimpaired condition, simply soundness. And number three, the quality or state of being complete and undivided. I want to introduce this message this morning just like this. Integrity seems to be an abstract concept as something that has been removed or separated from much of our society today. Integrity is the sum total of your honesty. 
Integrity is the sum total of our character. It is the sum total of our righteousness. And it is even the sum total of our godliness. Integrity is a precious thing that is easy to lose and hard to restore. One rash decision, one bad choice, one weak moment can cost you the integrity that it will take years of faithfulness to restore. I want to say that again. Integrity is a precious thing. I want you to just take just a brief second or two. And would you just look at the person sitting nearby you and say, do you realize how precious integrity is? I want you to think about that. I'm, I'm not sure that there's few people that really consider this one little word integrity anymore. Certainly in our nation's governmental structure, even in the workplace, and I'm sorry to say even in the church house, if you will, or among the people of God. Integrity is a precious thing that is easy to lose and hard to restore. Amen. One more time. One rash decision, one bad choice, one weak moment can cost you the integrity that it will take years of faithfulness to restore. Perhaps this is why Job was so adamant when he said, I will defend my integrity until I die. I will maintain my innocence without wavering. He said, my conscience is clear for as long as I live. Listen, Job made these very deliberate statements after he had lost all of his earthly wealth. We know this story over and over again, and I'm not going to go through it. But Job made these very deliberate statements after he had lost all of his earthly wealth, which the scripture in Job chapter 1 said he was the richest man in that part of the world. The scripture reveals to us that he lost ten children by horrible death. He lost his health. His wife advised him to curse God and die. His supposedly best friends give him poor counsel. They made him feel so uncomfortable until he said to them in Job chapter 13 verse 4, As for you, you smear me with lies. And as physicians or as doctors, he said you're a worthless quacks. If I could encourage you to do one single thing today, it would be this. Hold fast to your integrity and do not let it go. Amen. I was expecting just a little more excitement about this subject. We, the people of God, if anyone can receive this message today, we ought to receive it with a standing ovation to God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost that He has given us the ability to obtain, to obtain an integrity that's unlike anything in this world. Hold fast to your integrity and do not let it go. Don't let it go for anything. Don't let it go for anyone. Don't let it go for any purpose. Don't sell it. Never bargain it. Shirley and I were going through some difficult times a few years ago. Probably been about 10 years ago now. And it was extremely difficult time for us. The church that we were pastoring were very difficult. There was so much stuff going on in this church. It was just, it was just unbelievable. But we were going through some very difficult times and one day Shirley looked over at me and she said these words to me. She said, honey, right now you are the only person in this world that I trust. She said that to me because she watched me for years do whatever I had to do to maintain my integrity. 
It's my integrity. Would you say that out loud this morning? It's my integrity. And she said, honey, right now, this moment in time, you're the only person in the world that I trust. She said that to me because she watched me year after year, over and over again, do whatever I had to do to maintain my integrity. That's what I've always endeavored to do. Now, you can look at that any way you want. Uh, I'm certainly not bragging on me. I'm boasting in Christ. But I'm going to give me a little bit of credit because he gave me this integrity and he gave me the authority and the power to stand my ground and say to anyone, whomever it might be, it's my integrity. I'm going to defend it and I'm going to protect it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God. That's what I will always continue to endeavor to do. I will defend my integrity until I die. It is my integrity. Integrity is not something that happens by accident. It's not something that is gained easily. It is the product of faithfulness. It is the product of decisions made day in and day out, day in and day out. It is tested multiple times in a day and each time integrity is tested, it gains in statue. I would not forfeit my integrity for anything in this world. Hallelujah. Defend your integrity. Integrity. It is your integrity. Defend your incorruptibility. Defend your soundness. Defend your completeness. Defend the fact that you're not divided. That you are property of the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. And that you're not going to waver to the right nor to the left. But you're going to be men and women of integrity. Oh, I want this to bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Integrity is the composition of an untold multitude of right decisions. It is an untold multitude of honest statements. It is an untold multitude of good character. It is an untold multitude of godly living. Don't you love to be around people and talk with people that when they say yes, you know that's what they mean. Yes. Amen. I, I, I want to be gracious and kind. I'm going to be kind. I'm so tired of people that are fickle. They can't seem to make up their mind. They just flow with whichever way the wind's blowing. If it's blowing north, that's the way they go. If it's blowing south, that's the way they go. If it's blowing east, that's the way they go. If it's blowing west, that's the way they go. You cannot maintain your integrity until you have soundness, incorruptibility in your personal life. You live that way. You'll die that way before you'll trade it off, trade it in, or even bargain with it because it is your integrity. Yeah, that's right. Hallelujah. Oh, that's <laughs> Glory to God. My integrity. I feel good even saying that. I don't have much. But I have integrity. I don't even own my own home. Wasn't for you good people, we wouldn't have a place to live. I don't. Nothing wrong. I hope you all own a lot of land. I get ready to retire. Maybe you'll help me out. That's not. That's not. That's not. That's not you know, my point. But there's just something so admirable when I meet with people and I speak with people. I got so upset on the telephone yesterday. I, uh, they called me January, back the first of this year. And they called me from some software company. And they gave me a, a line that would go downtown, I guess. They just went on and on and on about the problems I was having on my computer. And I'm thinking, how in the world you know what's going on with my computer? Anyway, long story short, let me cut the chase. I, so he, he convinced me that I need to let them have control and so they could clean up my computer for $200. Wow. Yeah, yeah, you should have told me back before that. 
Too late, I've spent the $200. But listen to me. I don't want to sound tough. I, I just can't hardly stand people that have no integrity. Telling a lie to them simply means absolutely nothing. Stealing means nothing to them. Ripping off elderly people, they can do it. Seemingly with no conscience whatsoever. Long story short, up until yesterday afternoon about 4 o'clock. I have received one telephone call after them from uh, and another. And when they would call, I would say, listen, Mr. Robert, that's what they call Mr. Robert. Mr. Robert, this is so and so. And I said, all right, what can I do for you? So he started his little spiel again. I said, you need to understand I'm not interested. You got $200 from me the first of this year. You're not going to get any more from me. Now, I, I'm done. Please, I'm, don't call me anymore. Well, a few weeks later, they call me again. We go through it. We go through it. I go through the same old spiel. I try to use the Christian attitude, the right spirit, and the right conduct. You know, we, because that's, that's who we are. That's who we are. That's part of our integrity. But after about six or eight calls, when I had been very explicit to these people, I said, do you not understand I'm not interested anymore? And before I'm going to give you another $200 to, what, to do what you did to my computer in January, I'm not going to do it. Just not going to do it. I'm not interested, so don't call me anymore. Do not call me anymore. Take my telephone number off of your calling list. Yes, Mr. Robert, we will do that. One call after another. Yesterday, I received two or three calls until my sweet, tender spirit. <laughs> and you know what one of these... People of no integrity whatsoever had the audacity to call and ask me, Mr. Robert, would you like for us to refund your $200? Well, come to find out it wasn't even $200, it was less than that. So he got all mixed up in his lying attitude right there. And I, he said, well, would you like a refund, Mr. Robert? So I went along for just a little bit. I said, well, of course. Sure, I'd like to have my my money back. It didn't do me any good. He said, well, all you have to do, Mr. Robert, you just give us your credit card number. I said, wait just a minute. <laughs> you know what I said to him? I said, buddy, you can't see me and I can't see you, but I'm here to tell you if you were standing in front of my office desk with a gun at my head, you could not get my credit number. And I said, don't you call me anymore. I've warned you people. I've been nice. I've been kind. I've been gracious, but I've had it with you. Yeah. He hangs a phone up. <laughs> I drive Shirley out to respect yesterday afternoon. My blessed cell phone rings again. <laughs> Mr. Robert, I nearly go through my new Lincoln Town car. <laughs> Head first. I said, how, how dare you call me again? Now listen, don't y'all think any different of me, any less of me. But now I'm telling you, when I've had enough, I've had enough. And when I've had enough, best thing for you to do is just leave me alone a few minutes. I said to him, I said, listen, you people absolutely have no integrity whatsoever. I said, you are liars, you are cheaters, and you steal from people. And I said, if you call me one more time, Time, I said, don't misunderstand me because I do have that uh, Virginia accent. I said, don't you misunderstand me if you call me one more time. Whatever I have to do, I'm going to cause you some trouble. I'm finished with you. Don't you ever call my number again. I am so tired of people, of businesses, of groups that have absolutely no credibility, have no integrity, have no soundness. They are corrupt, not incorruptible. They are not complete. They are divided and they will do or say anything. Yeah. 
And I know that's what people who listen to this YouTube. You're going to hear that and probably tear me all to pieces next week. But it's my integrity. It's your integrity. You defend it. You protect it. But be honest. Be forthright. Be upright. Let your yea be yea. Let your nay be nay. Tell the truth. If it bankrupts the piggy bank, the piggy bank, tell the truth. Tell the truth. Well, I don't know why I'm so hot on this this morning. Got to be a reason for it. Listen to me carefully. You cannot be anything good without integrity. Amen. 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 You cannot be anything good without integrity. Now this should make anybody in this room wheel this morning. You ought to be praising the Lord for this. I'm so comfortable preaching this. Hearing this, I'm comfortable hearing this. I wish one of you were up here preaching. I like to just stand up and ag you on and say, Go get him, Tiger! <laughs> Integrity! You cannot consent to sin. You cannot consent to sin. You cannot consent to sin and maintain integrity. You can't be partakers of other men's sin, Paul said to young Timothy. You cannot consent to sin and maintain integrity. I preached this scripture that I'm about to read to you probably at least 1,000 times over the years. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 21, You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. I'm preaching incorruptibility, soundness, complete, and undivided. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You cannot have a part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. Amen. Amen. You can argue this scripture and debate its content. However, there's really nothing to debate. It is very clear. Anyone reasonable can understand what Paul is saying. I've said this hundreds of times. I've said it here three or four times. You cannot sleep with the devil and have breakfast with Jesus. If you have any integrity, when you start sleeping with the devil and try to have breakfast with Jesus, you lose your integrity. And I will defend my integrity until I die. I will keep my conscience clear, Job said, before the Lord all the days of my life. I will maintain. I will hold fast. I will not forfeit my integrity. I'm a bit of a history buff, not, you know, not to an extreme, but I love to read some of these statements that these old forefathers that wrote to put together our great constitution. Thomas Paine, one of these four, one of our founding fathers, he said this, arguing with a person who has renounced the use of reasoning is, it, is like administering medicine to a dead man. And I'm even thinking about dear brothers, dear ministers. How in the world? How can we forfeit? How can we not stand, defend? Listen, sometimes your integrity is really all you have. 
I, I just want to tell you so everybody will know on the YouTube and here, the enemy is really trying to mess with me over preaching this this morning. And he ought to know by now, when he does, I'm just going to preach it that much more straightforward. So I'm going I'm to give him about two seconds to back off just a little bit. Go get him, Todd. That's it, Lord. Go get him, Todd. It saddens my heart. It saddens my heart. I can't tell you. I just cannot tell you how it saddens my heart. It's getting better now. But did you know a few short years ago, all my life, I've taken great godly pride in who I am. All my ministry, 46 years, in my most difficult, dark, and dismal hours, not that there have been that many, but there have been a few, I thought, God, you have given me this little backwoods boy from a little small town. You, you couldn't even see it on the map. 300 people Someone just went in there about a hundred years ago, I suppose, and just dug it out. I don't even know bulldozers were in the making then. Just dug out earth and put it right in. It, just, it was wrapped up. and a, a, a mountain just embraced my little town. Such a small little town. And I thought, God, how in the world? You, how in the world? You, you've put in me. And I don't have anybody else to really talk about this right now, but I know me. How many know yourself? I mean, you know you. I know who I am. Now, when I leave this pulpit this morning and go home and go back to the bathroom to wash my hands or do whatever, and when I look in the mirror, I have no problem whatsoever looking at me and saying, Buddy, I know you. I have no problem looking at myself and saying to me, Bob Garman, you have defended your integrity because it's your integrity and God has given me the ability to fight for my integrity, to protect my integrity. Many times over the years the enemy would come in, he'd come in like a flood and he'd try to mess with my integrity, he'd try to tear it down but when my wife looked at me and she said honey you're the only person in the world right now that I trust she only said that. Sure, she loves me. Sure, she's grateful. We're grateful for one another. But she's watched me for years defend, protect, and maintain my integrity. And it's mine. It's mine. If you got it, you better hold on to it. Don't you give it up for anything. Don't you give it up for some man? Don't you give it up for some woman? Don't you give it up for a job? Don't you give it up for a position? Don't you give it up for finances, wealth, health? Don't even forfeit your integrity for your health. Don't trade it for anything. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Sadly, I am so sad. I am so sad. I can't tell you. I can't tell you. I can't tell you how sad it makes me. How I, I've seen good men, good men, even good women, but good men that have forfeited, that have lost their integrity for such frivolous, trivial, Insignificant. Matter of fact, there's nothing significant enough to lose and forfeit your integrity, irregardless of what it might be. I'm just going to get through this. I don't want to overload you with this. I'm telling you, this, this has become just about a forgotten subject. Known people over the years. Passionate people. That have lied. That have falsified things. I pastored a church one time where one single person had misappropriated over $200,000. Saddens my heart. 
saddens me when our government has become corrupt. You didn't misunderstand me. Our government has become corrupt. If you want to expect to hear the truth, I'm sure everybody, 423, I believe, Congress, Senate, and so on, I'm sure that there are some there that have held on to their integrity. Oh my God. How sad. And then it's even sadder, church, when we sit back on our little holier-than-thou, self-righteous podiums. A preacher said just this week, it's troubled my soul ever since. Actually, I was like Elvis. I left the place. Something come up. Actually, I was complimenting you all for last Saturday a week ago. I, I want you to know how proud I am. I don't know how many people I've told this week how proud I am of the people that God has blessed me to care for and minister to you. And I was just complimenting. And one person spoke up. said, I'm just so tired of the church worrying about all this stuff. I'm thinking, what happened to you when you got out of bed this morning? Yeah. Did you stumble and bump your head on the nightstand? Do you hear what I'm saying? It's, it's sad. It's sad when we just keep looking the other way. Yeah. Let me tell you why I can't look the other way. Because I will defend my integrity until I and hate and things that are so completely against the will and the mind of our God. Amen. 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 And please, if you're planning on telling me after church, caution me and say, be careful, pastor. Just don't do that anymore. Be careful. Lest you fall. Well, if I haven't learned that by now, you just let me fall. Ooh, I want to say so much this morning. Daddy's little girl, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I'm just... I just want somebody to tell me what's happened to her and take preacher that I know, and I know a lot of preachers. I'm going to get the opportunity to say to this one, that said that. I'm trying to brag on you and compliment you for your tenacity and for you standing up and I bragged on you. Somebody said, but preacher, you wasn't there. Yeah, but you've been hearing my voice as I speak for God. Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, the church of God must stand again. Hold on. that doesn't have a clue. The devil will not have his way around here, period. Pray that I will always, and that you will always. I pray that I will always the word always means without exception. It means in any, every, and all occasions. That's what always, the word always means. I just come to me. I didn't have that written down. 
I pray that I will always be able to sing with Job. I hope you can say this with me and Job. Job and I. Let God. And Job couldn't stop God. But it's always better when we're open, sensitive, when we allow God. Lord, I have no problem. Look deep into my heart. If you do find something there that's kind of stinky, doesn't belong there, just root it out. Amen. Tired of people trying to say every time you preach or speak like this that you're trying to say that you're perfect and you never do anything wrong. I wish somebody would get that out of your silly thoughts. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to justify sin and wrongdoing because we all realize that none of us are perfect. I pray that God will always be able to say with Job, and I will always be able to say with Job, let God weigh me on the scales of justice. I'm going to tell you this morning, this may be a little prophetic. These liars, these people that have cheated, I'm going to say this boldly, those that have been responsible for our great men and women in this wonderful country that have been mistreated. You say, preacher, now you, you're just reading that and hearing that on Fox News. No, 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 no. I have friends that have been mistreated. But you hear me. You'd be much better off to determine where the scales of justice are. Just go over there to them. Just kind of pick yourself up by your little backside and just set up there and say, Now, Lord, just go ahead and weigh it. Because I'm here to tell you, everyone in this country, every man, every woman, I'm so sick and tired. I'm so tired of Miss Clinton talking about her being a woman. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't care if she's a woman. I'll tell you something else. Anybody knows me? I have not a race bone in my body. I'm not upset with our present president because he's black. Amen. I'm upset with our administration because too many people that have put their lives on the line that me, this little five foot six inch preacher, can stand up here with freedom, with liberty, hallelujah, and preach my heart, preach with Holy Ghost anointed conviction. And I want to promise you, whoever becomes president Tuesday night, next Sunday morning, one week from today, you're going to get the same kind of preaching out of me that you've been getting for 4.3 years. My integrity. I told a preacher friend of mine the other day, he said, I told my wife, he said, I'm probably going to go to jail if we don't get some help. He said, I'm probably going to go to jail. But of all the preachers that I know, one of them will be up to sale from me, and that'll be Bob Garner. Well, that crushed me. Thank God, I don't want to go to jail. One of you wonderful people said to me a few weeks ago, he said, Pastor, if they put you in jail, will this all come down to the county jail and have revival? I said, but if you can't have revival here, how are you going to have one down to the county jail? Let's get it going here. Let's get it going here. Whatever follows after that, it'll just follow. But let's have revival here. Let's stand that while we can. If I read any junk on Facebook about me, about this message, you better not sign your name. If you don't have the guts to sign your name, don't write it. Yeah, I know you wouldn't trade me for nothing, would you? Anything.
Breaks my heart. Breaks my heart. People that can help us. Breaks my heart. Men, women that have just literally given their lives. Grave after grave after grave. Wounded, mentally, emotionally, raw. In our great country. For God. Older people that have spent your lives paying into the social security. Now they say the next X number of years, some of you sitting here this morning may not ever get to enjoy anything that you put into it unless we get some help. You know, I ask of people, especially people that God has placed me over to care for you and to give you counsel. Now, if you don't want my counsel, that's okay. That's fine. But it saddens me when the people of God cannot listen attentively enough. Have you ever had a buffet meal and you filled your plate up, had so much of it, just, you're just running over the side? Yeah, and you started, you know, you had some good old fried, country fried chicken. Whew. I mean, you, you could have you filled up on just that fried chicken. But there's several other little items in there. And as you picked around, you took a little bite here, a little bite there. may have been something that you put on your plate that you didn't particularly like. And when you put it in your mouth, you went, oh, it's like eating a sour lemon or grape, bad grape or something. But what you did, you just kind of pushed it aside. You didn't dump the plate out. You finished the fried chicken. You finished the mashed potatoes and the gravy. You finished, finished your salad. You just didn't like whatever that stuff was that give you a bad taste. That's what we need to do when it comes to our country. That's what we need to do when it comes to anything. Listen attentively. Pay attention and allow the Holy Spirit to deal with your heart. Forget about the female. Forget about the color. Yes, that's right. yes, yes. Well, I can tell you right now, Dr. Ben Carson had, had been the nominee. When I go to vote Tuesday, I would have voted for Dr. Ben Carson. Yes, right. And I'll be very honest with you, and I know I stand in jeopardy of saying this much in the pulpit. But if there wasn't so much verification about Miss Clinton right now, I'm telling you when I go Tuesday, I would gladly check in her name for the next president of the United States. Not because she's a woman. And I humbly say to you this morning, that is the most intelligent mindset that any of us can have. You don't vote because of their color. You don't vote because of their sex. You vote because you believe that's the way God wants you to vote. And don't forget. I'll be so glad next Sunday comes. Maybe I'll get a little different direction here. And do not forget. You're not going to find Jesus' name on any ballot. So the best is just not going to be there. But it will be with you in your heart. Oh, good day. Conclusion. In the good old days, people shook hands to close the deal on verbal agreements. I remember those days. The need for contract. Contracts and lawyers weren't nearly as necessary as today. People just simply gave their word and that was enough. Commitments were kept. Don't tell me preachers because we're so thickly populated. No, I'll tell you what the problem is. We have no integrity. Amen. When a couple enter to marriage, they exchange vows, promising for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, for as long as they both shall live. They made a commitment. Now I grant you it takes two to keep a marriage vow together. One can break it. But the commitment was made. In closing, I challenge each of you this morning to keep your commitments. Whatever they may be. Keep your commitments. Jeff and Renee have the greatest confidence in both of you. I've watched you for months. I'm tutoring Jeff, mentoring him in ministry. Call of God's on his life. But whatever you all do, you make sure that May the 20th, since I'm going to be the officiating clergyman, 
excuse me, clergy person. Make sure it's going to be a commitment that you both can keep until death separates you. I know that's taken so lightly or nothing. Doesn't mean anything. I told someone the other day, and my wife and I just celebrated our 50th anniversary. They look like, wow. They look like they was looking at a dinosaur. We're bombarded with messages, and I'm going to wind it down right. We are bombarded with messages today like, if it feels good to do it, just do it. Or always look out for number one. These are not great messages. These are not great messages if you want to live a life of integrity. Sometimes having integrity means you look out for what's best for others before you seek out your own interest. Oh, I mean, I could go on all afternoon. I'm just going to say, I really could. There's, there's things going through my mind, my spirit right now that are verifiable. I, I didn't read it in a book. I didn't hear it on TV. I lived through it. Sometimes having integrity means you just look out for what's best for others before you seek out your own interest. Integrity cannot be associated with selfishness. Romans 15, 1 and 3, familiar passage. We who are strong must be considered of those who are sensitive about things like this. We must not, we must not now, when you hear that, when it's, when it's approached like that, when teachers, preachers, the Apostle Paul wrote two-thirds of the epistles in the New Testament. And when the language is used, we must, we must and we must not. That's not a request. That's a requirement. It's a command. We must not please ourselves. We should help others to do what is right and build them up in the Lord. For even Christ didn't live to please himself. Amen. He could have. He could have called for 10,000 angels to rescue him from the old rugged cross. He said in the garden of Gethsemane, Father, he was hurting. I'm telling you, he was a hurting Savior. He wasn't doing cartwheels. He wasn't jumping up and down, laughing, and joking, and kidding. It was a very crucial moment in time for God Almighty in the flesh. And you know what he said. He said, Father, if there's any way at all, is there anything that can be done that would remove this awful destiny of mine? Paraphrasing. Father, is there anything that can be done that could take away this tragic I, there's, I can't even find a word there's not a word in Webster's Dictionary that can really be definitive and define emphatically what Jesus must have been going through with Father is there any way at all anything that can be done well of course at the very beginning of that prayer God could have stopped it right there on the spot there's always something God can do but lies not he'll never go against his word he'll never break his covenant but he could have stopped it. But before Jesus said anymore, Father, is there anything? Is there any way this cup can pass from me? And before he even gave his father time to answer, if the Lord, if Father was going to answer, he said, Father, not my will, but yours be done. We must not please ourselves. Even Christ didn't live. To please himself. As the scriptures say, the insults of those who insult you, O oh God, have fallen on me. I want you to stand with me. I'm going to close right there. As long as I live. I'm telling you, it takes something to say this. I mean, you can say a lot of stuff. You can blow a lot of smoke. <laughs> How many are familiar with this smokeless tobacco that someone has created? And I guess it's better than the others, nothing good about any of it. But sometimes if we're not careful, 
You know, it's just like you, you, you exchange one, one addiction or one thing that's not good for you to something that's not much better. And then, you know, the real smoke, it takes it a while to dissipate. And this, my son Brian uses it. And he'll take a big puff of it. It just makes no sense to me, but he'll take a big puff of it. And you would think, man, he's going to, he's going to create a cloud right out here in the front yard. And all of a sudden, it doesn't hardly blow out of his mouth until it dissipates. It's gone. Listen to me. Job said, as long as I live, nothing shallow, nothing superficial, as long as I live, while I have breath from God. Oh, I hope you can say this with me. I'm going to close like this with this in just a moment. As long as I live. Think about that. As long as I live. I grow so weary with people saying, I just can't hold on. I just can't make it. I just can't do this. You're not determined. You sell out to Jesus. Yes. Sell out to Jesus. I dare you. Yes, Lord. As long as I live. Listen to that. Isn't that beautiful words? Job said this. As long as I live. While I have breath from God. Beaten, worn out. Lost all of his wealth. Ten children. Wealthiest man. Richest man in that part of the world. Friends. Supposedly friends become nothing but miserable physicians of no value to him. His wife said, Job, just curse God and die. Job said, as long as I live, while I have breath from God, my lips will speak no evil and my tongue will speak no lies. Did you know what's gotten to be? It's nothing. Are people lying more? People lie now, not even blink their eyes. A lot of Christian people lie and not think anything about it. Something wrong with that. I want you to repeat after me. Now, if you can't, just mumble it or don't say anything. I want you to repeat this after me. Everybody say together, as long as I live. Oh God, as long as I live. While I have breath from you, Lord, my lips will speak no evil, and my tongue will speak no lies. Father, I thank you this morning.